if you're looking for a little bit of a touring car that you can have on a daily basis and don't really need to pack too many things in for well then let me tell you that maybe the mercedes c-class would be the perfect one for you because it is a mini type of the executive version that you will be using for well every day-to-day -day driving this one is a touring of, of course there are a sedan and a long wheelbase version available as well as a coupe so this one in particular is a CDI and the most common engine bought by Mercedes, the C220 diesel engine. So going ahead into the infotainment system, it is just as simple as in the old days. Because this one, the one I'm sat in is a W204 edition, which was made, and this is a facelift, so it was made between 2011 and 2015 before they went into W205 making. So, simple infotainment system with a dial, digital display in the middle, which can display your mileage and how quick you're going and stuff like that. If you just turn the key one more, just get on the navigation, the audio, telephone system, and loads of more stuff that you can choose between. You can upgrade to digital dials, but those will be costed way more, and I don't know if the facelift version will have them. And here is your CD display, which is CD right now. And you can get this one to choose. You get a CD radio on how you want to promote that. And as well as navigation. I think, personally, in my opinion, I don't think the navigation system in this is as smart as it could have been. But it's not too far off. You load in the map there and it comes up and then you display everything. And if you want to get your audio back, you just press that and it will pop up like that. There's loads of other system here as well, as well with heated seats. Well, like it's a bit on the bland side. It feels old, but it isn't necessarily old. So you can't really fight it. And so like this, you have the AMG wheel because this one in particular has the Avangarde upgrade as well as the AMG Sport upgrade, woohoo. And then, of course, you get the parking brake with this one right here, which you release like that. And um, these are for the lights. So pretty simple and everything. There's other bits and piece of storage right here, which you can stuff a lot of stuff in, actually. As well as the glove box here. And the door bins are quite small. So if you want to fit bigger bottles of water in them, you may or may not struggle a bit. Of course, the footwell, I can't really fight it, though. Moving on into the rear seats, uh, it's not that bad, but one thing I will say is that you don't have a lot of knee room, neither in the footwells, and this is usually my grandfather's fault of citizenship. If you have a really tall person driving, you are going to be struggling in the back, like right now I'm touching it, and down here as well. H headroom is so okay. I will point out though, if you go for a sedan, it will be worse if you have the sunroof upgrade because that need, tends to eat headroom ever so slightly as well. Being two in the back, just get that there. Being two in the back, of course, you're gonna have loads of space here as well. As well as the door bins here are really small. So if you're trying to carry water, you may need to carry a bigger bottle in the front. Uh, on this side, however, where I'm sitting, I have a bit further narrower seat. So here, of course, I have more knee room here as well. And there's loads of footwells to space up. I mean, look at that. I'm, I'm climbing in there. So here as well, it's just the same. However, being three in the back, you are going to struggle. But not too harsh because the middle seat is tended to be raised up and the transmission here. So we may struggle a bit for foot space. But other than that, it's not too bad. And people over six foot may struggle a bit here since the lights are directed over here. Other than that, there's no direct problem being in the rear seats of this. So um, yeah, and you also got your plane businesses, which you can put down here. These are actually comes as standards. It's not an upgrade like on a BMW. And you have the rear and you have the rear vans vents here, and clear eye view here as well as well the only blind spot may be those two right there but other than that it's not too far off and moving on to the boot capacity of this c-class and on the touring version you may need to fold it up but it goes up automatically once you got it going so as a standard with nothing of this in here you will get a total of 416 liters of boot space as well with a bit of 
space down here just that i have a trouble opening that i don't have the nails for it but otherwise you just lift that up here and you got some more bits and pieces down here and you got the tidy net which you have to pay extra for which is unnecessary in my opinion but uh so is actually with a bmw you have to pay extra for it so you got your 12 volt socket here you can actually fold down the rear seats um if you remove all of this but it is a bit glitchy and everything so i don't want to do that right now other than that this car would be perfect if you could just niddle this out like on a bmw where you got two buttons here you just loosen it up but it is relatively wide once when you got a removal so when you remove it it is relatively light and how do you open the hood on this thing i actually never tried it myself it's underneath here somewhere there's a button where you open it other than that it is okay the amg wheels also get manual gearing so it is not way too far off these vents they give great conditioning here as well uh, so moving on here in the middle as well this bits in here well of course if you just remove these you can shut this open it like that Get a bit of extra storage here when you want and a charging pocket 12 volt there as well so you can carry a lot of stuff in this except for the boot um let me just say that if space is your main main ideology with a mercedes you are way better off in an e-class than a c-class because the c-class is smaller and i think that e-class is standard to get 535 liters of boot space which is incredible and if you fold down the rear seats and the nets of that you get a total capacity of 1228 liters which is massive it is even more than the 5 series and if you get an amg upgrade as well you will get the amg brakes which says there somewhere these one are bridgestones as standard you get 19 inch wheels but you can upgrade to 21s and 22s which is good for this types of car especially if you want to be a bit more sporty about it well this one currently is upgraded with it let's get these silver trims if you go for an amg line those will be blacked out you can't get them in silver if you had the amg line upgrade so if that is your main thing and i mean the grill is not too aggressive, but it was good enough for back in the day. Uh, so if you're looking for a more sporty Mercedes, you, you are, maybe the C-Class is your thing. You should probably go for a sedan then, but this one is mainly just for tour around. I mean, you don't buy these to go throwing them back the, down the back road now every day, do you? Oh, as well, I should point out that you have the middle rest is easy to take down. You just actually grab here and oh my God, look at that. And then you can open this like that and there are some cup holders for you this is the easiest neat trick to get down and then with that you can also loosen it up here i don't want to get my time doing that now so and then you just take them from the bottom fold them up together it's like a normal seat once again is it now when i have reviewed that it's time to head on to the main road and see how this feels like to drive or more like to be a passenger in because i'm not old enough to drive yet am i <clears throat> one thing i did forget to mention is that you can also put your books and stuff in this net which comes down here uh, i didn't want to check if you had to pay extra for that but i don't think so so you're good off with that as well just put my phone right there while i take the seat belts on seat belts are not too grabby and easy to put on relatively so it's not too bad and and there's the click so standard seat belts standard everything really and as i mentioned before when they are fitted with the advent garde upgrade and the amg sport you do have stiffer suspension which is why this one in particular might not be the best to travel in because it has the sport suspension on it like that but it does not feel that too far off it's worse if you go for the thinner wheels and with the amg suspension this one doesn't have the amg suspension that's the sport suspension the amg suspension is even stiffer and is more made for cornering but i can already tell you that this is not too bad for cornering either 
if comfort is what you want, you should go for either the standard suspension or maybe even the upgradable air suspension. However, the air suspension is almost a $2,000 upgrade, so yeah. But if comfort is your main feature and you just want a wagon to bed kind of ride, you should really pay the extra for the air suspension. It is well, well worth it. So already taking a ride in this, it feels like a normal C-Class. It's not that far off. And um, well, for people watching this, we can start with the engines. This one, the C220, has a 2.2 liter, straight four, singular turbo diesel engine that as a standard puts out 170 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque with a seven speed G-tronic sim single speed singular clutch um, transmission. And there are, are of course uh, smaller engines. There are of course smaller engines and bigger engines for the ones wanting. Uh, but I feel like this one it has the it has the punch indeed, and it is really one of the more relaxable ones because you don't feel it either. There is a bit of tire noise coming though, but maybe because one of the fire benches on this is actually broken. And you, we got leather a leather hock chassis on this. You can also, if you want, by the way, you can upgrade to wishbone suspensions. Um, I think those are on the newer ones, though. This one is a W204 facelift as well. Those are some closings right here, in case I didn't mention that. And this silver trim, I got to warn you guys when you get this, this silver trim, it looks amazing, but it scratches really easy. So it won't be taking long until it looks tatty. But it's not like my mother's one, which is a plastic piano cover. That thing shows greasy fingerprints this one doesn't which is good about that if you have something with these iron thing it will scratch really easy that's one thing to worn out for other than that not too bad this trim right here as well that may show a bit of things but you can actually just remove that for a silver trim as well if you want to uh, in terms of economy well let me just check real quick we are doing 0 0.82 right now, which is roughly 42 miles per gallon, which is not too bad for this engine because it is accordingly should do 50 miles per gallon at average, which is what this thing is doing as well. So this one will be the most economical engine. It can be a bit rattly though, when you accelerate due to the diesel engine. Uh, if you don't want that diesel rattle, just go for one of the petrols as well. The one in the 300C is freaking rapid in case you need some more performance. But I can tell that this one isn't too far off when it comes to performance either. There are bigger diesel engines as well as smaller diesel engines. There is the C180. However, when you go for those smaller engines, you will not get a lot of power. In the C180, for an example, D, you only have 125 horsepower with 280 newton meters of torque. I mean, that's nothing. You, you won't be able to carry a wagon in the back or a camper. You will not be able to carry a lot of things, actually. So I need you to watch out for that. Uh, this is the one of the most bought engines, by the way, the C220. It has, well, okay acceleration and um, can carry the tons as well. Uh, the ones for the more portable ones, like the C250, you get 204 horsepower as standard with this particular model. And the newer models, you get 226 horsepower at standard in the 250D. If you want a bigger engine, you should go for the 350. That thing comes with a V6 engine and 286 horsepower. And it is blum and rapid. It will go to zero to 100 in five and a half seconds, which is really quick for one of these. And cruising along here on the outer way as well, you will definitely hear a bit of wind noise due to the chassis being rather vividly hard. But other than that, it's not really a big deal. And the response on this is great as well when you floor it. Can we do a kick down and now? Like there as well. Okay, that's enough. You can back off. So it is rather well when you have it in eco mode. There are well, for most cars, you only get two driver modes. It's Eco and Sport. Or if you have one of the AMG versions, you can have um, uh, C or S for comfort. Uh, this one has the M upgrade due to being the AMG versions as well. You can go on manual uh, shifters, which you can do with this one going back and forth. Or, as well as I mentioned, the paddles. So you will see a dialogued green E the driver's display for what mode you're in. Pressing this button down here once will 
take you into sport mode. On this particular car, it doesn't really stiffens up the suspension as it does on newer cars, but I will tell you that it does aggression up the it aggressions up the swift of the gear change. Uh, it will floor it down way quicker as well, and it just becomes way more aggressive. And the response is so swift when you have it in sport. Can we can we do a kick down in sport mode as well? So like on that, it will go to its top revs and keep on and going. Okay, you can back off. So on sport mode, it will really hold on to gears. That is what Mercedes actually did when they put in the nine speed, is that when you have it in comfort, it can be sluggish. As soon as you put it into sport, you got that aggressive feel straight away. So it's not that bad to be, honestly. Uh, this one doesn't feel like javly, as you can expect in an A-Class, for example, because it's so tiny. This one actually feels good, but as I mentioned earlier, if you want a more comfortable ride, you should go for the comfort suspension or even the air suspension if you have the money to do so. Uh, so this car will average the most and everything. I will also point out though, when you have the AMG suspension, if you have heavy people in the back, no offense, it can actually push down on the suspension holders in the rear, which will unfortunately break them due to the due to all the design. Because when you have them joiled together like this, on this particular bend, it can break easy. Uh, but it takes quite a lot of force to do so. Roughly four to 500 kilos, so... I mean, it can't break that easy. On average, what can I say about being a passenger in this? Well, what can I say? It's a relaxing car, really. Um, so, my final verdict would be that if you are looking for a small touring or sedan, you can even get them in a coupe. I will warn you though, if you get the coupe, you got even less headroom in the back. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of handling here now because we're coming up to the corner, see if it corners, not aggressively mentionedly, but yeah, we'll see how it handles now in this corner where we're turning up. So, um, yeah, so my final verdict on the cars will be, should you, should you avoid it, should you consider it, should you shortlist it, or should you just go right blumming ahead and buy it? I reckon you should consider this car anyway. Because it's a small little thing This can carry most of the things anyway. So I will also get into some pros and cons about this. The pros with this is that, which I've heard from friends as well trying this, is that uh, from the rivals, the E, B, C, E and S class, this one was the most fun to drive, we have their opinion. So they win in the rivals race. And due to the sportiness, this is obviously the most sportiest of the ones. Uh, due to fit capacity, this one will do great. Cons about this car can be that it is the most uncomfortable intersection when you get the AMG line on it, and it is really narrow in the rear when you have five adults in the car. Other than that, this car has been amazing. Thank you guys for watching this video. Bye-bye.